I think that most people who frequented Exalted forums or hang around with people who talk a lot about Exalted have probably read or heard this sentence at some point. You can't plan an Exalted game because the PCs are too powerful. The idea is that Exalted and especially Solar Exalted have powers at their disposal that allow the players to ruffle stomp challenges, ruin their storyteller's planned storyline and force their storyteller to improvise as a reaction to their shenanigans. This, of course, is incorrect. Storytelling for powerful PCs such as Solar Exalted is perfectly doable, but it's also fun and rewarding. This is The Patent Spider, a YouTube channel about roleplaying games. In this video we'll discuss things to keep in mind when storytelling for powerful PCs. While the video itself focuses heavily on the game Exalted, the ideas can be applied to any game with PCs of godlike power. The ultimate goal here is to be able to have an easy and rewarding time as a storyteller without having to rein in the player's powers, while motivating the player's creativity and motivate them to use the powers at their disposal. I'm going to divide this video into four sections. Knowing the player's desires, knowing the player's limitations, knowing the player's capabilities and contingencies. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you that I have a Patreon where I post free weekly previews from another game with powerful PCs, namely my own game Machineborn. I also post bi-weekly previews for $1 patrons. If you sign up now, you get access to the current alpha draft of the action manual, the character creation chapter, most of the available Bioware and more on the way. I expect the alpha drafts to be available for everyone soon, but until then it's available on the Patreon. If you sign up for the $3 reward share, you also get a manuscript for all scripted videos that have been posted on this channel, including this one. The only videos that don't have manuscripts are the impromptu unboxing videos. I also want to thank those who have supported me so far, and that goes for those of you who have liked, shared and commented on my videos. I appreciate all feedback and especially welcome constructive criticism. I want to know what I can improve and what you want to see from this channel going forward. Some upcoming videos I planned after this one is a deep dive into the Blue Rose Core book, another exalted lore video, this time about the Primordial War, and a general discussion video about tabletop role-playing games. I have my next 28 videos planned out, so you'll see a lot more from this channel going forward. I want to know if you'd like to see any specific videos in the future though, and I may see to it that I get to them quicker. Anyway, storytelling for powerful PCs. Knowing your PCs is the first step to knowing how to plan for them. In games like Exalted, characters have a list of intimacies that represent their feelings and desires about the world. Even if the player doesn't act out their intimacies rigorously in every scene, they are shaping the character's characteristics and drives, and knowing them as a storyteller will help you better understand how that PC may react to certain situations. In other games without the system to determine wants and characteristics, you may want to communicate with your player more directly about what they want to experience and achieve in game, as well as remember how they've acted to certain situations earlier in the game. When planning for a scene, making notes regarding a player's personalities will help you better improvise in response to their actions. For example, let's say you want to have a scene where the player group is going to meet up with an informant and question them in order to get the information that will lead them towards their goal. By knowing your pieces beforehand, you may know some details such as player A is more introverted than the others and will probably let the others take the lead there. Player B usually resorts to threats and violence and will probably intimidate the person into giving information. Player C is usually the face in social situations and will probably take the lead and try to make a deal with the person. Make some notes about what the consequences here could be if player B threatens the person or player C tries to bargain with them. Is there anything in their personalities or drives that may change how they approach the situation? If you cannot think of any, is there anything you want them to do or don't want them to do and can guide them towards? If you're worried that player B will kill the NPCs or scare them off so the group doesn't get any information at all, it's wise to plan for at least two things. First, see if you can indirectly discourage player B by appealing to another aspect of their personality. They're a big gambler, maybe the person is offering to play some dice over the information. They're a big drinker, maybe the person has a companion here that offers to pay player B for some drinks to get them away from the table when player C strikes the bargain. And of course, make a note of what the consequences would be if the players actually killed NPC without getting any information. This shouldn't kill the storyline outright. Instead, make sure that some following event can lead the players to where you want the story to take them. Alternatively, and perhaps even preferably, you want to encourage the players to do whatever it is they feel makes sense for the character. Even if player B kills the NPC without getting any information, you want the consequences of this action, even if detrimental in game, to feel fun and rewarding out of game. You don't want to restrict player B from doing what they think is fun unless it ruins the experience for the other players. If you feel like you should punish player B somehow, maybe for publicly committing a crime or drawing too much attention, 
The punishment should be strictly in-game while the out-of-game experience should be exciting and thrilling. This can be difficult to pull off, but it's something to keep in mind when planning out your scenes and storylines. In my experience, some of the most exciting moments of roleplay are the moments of failure and the consequences of those failures, and because of that, whenever possible, try to plan for failure. There will be times when you simply cannot foresee what your players will do, but knowing at least some of their personality traits and aspirations will be very helpful in planning scenes aimed at getting certain outcomes. But this is storytelling one-on-one that can be applied to any group of players in pretty much any game, and not just powerful PCs. The definition of a powerful PC is someone with norm is that they'll overcome the challenge, no matter how grand the challenge may seem on paper. Planning for failure may seem to be a waste when you know that the pieces will succeed, but failure is more than simply failed actions. Failure is also represented by detrimental consequences, and PCs who use godlike powers without regard for consequences should encounter these failures more often than someone who uses powers with more thought. By knowing the PCs' desires and personalities, you will often be a step ahead when it comes to foreseeing the possibility of certain actions, whether detrimental or rewarding. Being powerful doesn't mean that you're powerful at everything. Even the most powerful characters tend to be specialized in some ways, while being less capable than others. Player groups often build characters with this in mind, actively avoiding overlap by covering more ground. As a storyteller, I want to give my players as much freedom as possible when they're building and developing their characters, but I find that the experience is more fun when there's little overlap and more focus on character specializations. If everyone's playing a rogue, more players are more likely to want to resolve challenges in a similar way. If, on the other hand, everyone is focusing on different roles, you can better tune the story in ways that sometimes let some characters shine more than others. Knowing that the rogue can pick locks and sneak around unseen is important, but it's also important to know that the same rogue cannot as easily take on an army as a powerful warrior, and they are less likely to strike a bargain with an experienced merchant than the player is actually playing a merchant. When preparing a situation that will challenge the players, make note of the player's strengths, weaknesses and specializations, and try to think of multiple ways the situation can be approached. Even if some players are better suited for that challenge, try to think of some ways that the less suited characters can approach it successfully, even if you don't directly give the players hints in-game. There will be times when puzzles and challenges that seem obvious to you aren't so obvious to your players. Since they don't have insight into your mind, a puzzle with an easy solution may only be easy to the one who constructed the puzzle to begin with. The warrior and the merchant may not see a solution to the army or bargaining challenge that you've set up. It may be the rogue with the clear limitations that figure out that they actually have the strength to overcome these challenges. They may not be able to take on an army directly, but the rogue's player may be creative enough to come up with ways to use their strengths in order to weaken or defeat that army in other ways. In addition, even if the rogue isn't good at bargaining, pickpocketing the merchant may remove any need for a bargain to begin with. When a character has clear limitations, a good player thinks in terms of their strengths and not in terms of those limitations. When there are things they cannot do, it becomes much more apparent what they can do. When you try to plan for these situations in game, try to make some notes about how every player in the scene could possibly approach the situation, if you can think of any. Let's say that you have the rogue, the warrior and the merchant, and the challenge you have in mind is to acquire a special golden necklace from a rich noble surrounded by bodyguards. Think about what each of these three players can and cannot do and make notes accordingly. For example, the rogue may try to sneak up close to the noble and steal the necklace. The warrior may fight the bodyguards, kill the noble and take the necklace off their corpse. The merchant may approach them and bargain with them for the necklace. Based on what you know of your player's personalities and desires so far, you may suspect that certain actions are more likely than others, but the more approaches you can think of when planning the situation, the more prepared you will be to respond to any surprises the players can come up with. Ultimately, it's more helpful to think of the player's weaknesses as directions for how they can better utilize their strengths. You know your player's characteristics and desires. You also know their strengths, weaknesses and specializations. For most of the time and for most games, this is more than enough to be prepared for just about anything. But when it comes to games like Exalted, where the character's special powers can let them accomplish just about anything imaginable, it's good to keep those powers in mind. Depending on how the players use their godlike powers, what you thought would be an interesting adventure may be completely turned on its head. Have you presented the local tyrant as a great threat? Maybe one player shapeshifts into the tyrant's bodyguard, gets close to them, kills the tyrant themselves and shapeshifts into them, then takes the counter for themselves. That wasn't what you intended as a storyteller, so how do you respond to it? 
Well, first of all, in games like Exalted, you want to encourage the players to use their powers exactly like that. It's very important to remember that the powers at the player's disposal aren't obstacles for you to overcome, but weapons at the player's arsenal. You shouldn't plan the game in a way that diminishes or restricts the player's capabilities. No, you should plan the game in a way that benefits from those capabilities. Knowing how your players tackle certain problems come with experience, but before you get that experience in game, make some personal notes about what their powers actually allow them to do. If a player can change shape or create illusions to infiltrate any palace, you need to know that this power is on their character sheet, and you will give that player a better experience if you prepare your game with that power in mind. When you present a local tyrant, knowing your player's power, it's important that you welcome the possibility that the player does exactly what the power allows them to do. The key to a good story for powerful PCs isn't the challenges and obstacles that they may face on their way to overturn the tyrant, but the catharsis of success, the potential their success has for future accomplishments and stories, alongside the challenges and obstacles that may come with that success. So, your player is now the tyrant, and they've got the counter at their disposal, but as they revel in their success, they're unaware that their action had unforeseen consequences upon the fabric of fate, and now the vicers of heaven are turning their eyes upon them. Overcoming the tyrant was just a moment, but now stars will descend upon them. Your players are godlike in their power, and the actual story is godlike in scope. They think they've seen a tyrant, you crack your knuckles, they've seen nothing yet. Games should be tuned for their players, and games with powerful PCs should present powerful adventures. If you let your level 20 Dungeons and Dragons of Adventure group head into a dungeon balance for levels 1 to 3, those players will not only walk right through the dungeon, but they'll be bored along the way. The same applies to games like Exalted, where you cannot present mortal challenges to godlike characters, you need to make a story that matches their power, so that the players can feel that their powers mean anything and they experience the catharsis of success rather than the boredom of a ruffle stomp. But how do I possibly prepare for all of this, I hear you say, my YouTube watching friend. Ultimately, you don't want to have to prepare for anything, because you'll know your group and what you can do by heart, but that comes with experience. Instead, use the guidelines I've mentioned so far. Know what your pieces are like and what their goals are. Know their overall strengths and weaknesses to understand what role they fill and in what moments they can shine. Then with that knowledge in mind, build a story that encourages the players to shine by specifically taking note of their current powers and magics when designing your challenges. Encourage the shapeshifter to shapeshift or the combat monkey to fight things at all. Encourage the socialite to whisper poison in the ears of diplomats and the thief to steal relics from palace walls. If the players get stuck and don't know what to do, you can give them some discreet nudges in the right direction, but don't get upset or frustrated if they don't pick up on your clues or don't tackle things in ways you thought were obvious. There will be times when the players do something that make your notes completely worthless and a new situation is at hand that you hadn't foreseen and don't know how to tackle. That brings us to the last subject of this video. A contingence is a panicked reaction for when your players threw your planned adventure out the window. The better you are at improvising, the better you can handle it, but you can also plan for contingencies where you feel that you need them the most. Remember the informant with information and the player you thought were at risk at killing them before the group could find out what you wanted them to find out. Adding a contingency note would be something like, if the group doesn't get the information, this could happen, dot dot dot, followed by some other way to find out the information. The planned contingency in this situation is a guideline for yourself to avoid getting stuck in your own story when things didn't turn out the way you wanted. But some contingencies just can't be foreseen. Maybe you were sure that the group would get the information in one, two or three ways, but you never expected the scene to end up with not only the group getting the information, but the group not only getting the information out to the informant, but befriending them through social wit and magic, and acquiring a loyal new servant with much more and much more useful information than you expected them to get. Your contingency in this situation shouldn't be to simply reject the player's success, get rid of the NPC and return to your decided status quo. Your contingency here should be to go with the flow and give the players a bigger win in the moment than originally planned. And if you feel unable to improvise new content on the spot and you're stuck in your own story, there's only really one thing you can do. Don't force it. If you tell your group that, you know what, I didn't expect this, I like where this went, but it stumped me a bit and I need to gather my thoughts to know where to go next with this, your group will accept that. Your players will likely enjoy the result more if you take a break for you to gather your thoughts than if you stumble through an improvised session that you feel bad about. 
players will know when you don't know what to do and while they may be helpful and supportive to get the game going there's nothing wrong with taking a break or ending a session early this happens to every gm quite a few times in their careers and it's nothing to feel bad about so in summary i've talked a lot about things to keep in mind and things to plan for but it's just not possible to plan for everything and the more comfortable you become at storytelling the less planning you need to do at all I'm personally a rather plan-heavy storyteller who likes to write notes for myself about what every PC can do in any given session or situation. This isn't optimal for every storyteller, but it's something I'm comfortable doing. I prefer story-driven campaigns where I know the PCs well and can tailor individual storylines for them. Other storytellers and other campaigns have different methods and different needs. What I mentioned in this video about knowing your PC's desires, knowing their limitations and knowing their capabilities is, I feel, a good guideline to keep yourself as prepared as you can possibly be in order to avoid contingencies. But those contingencies will happen, and sometimes it's more important to know how to face them than it is to prepare enough to avoid them. I mentioned earlier that the most memorable role-playing experiences often come from the failures, but they also come from the contingencies, from the unplanned and unforeseen events that no one saw coming. When you play a game with powerful PCs capable of godlike feats, these moments come more often than I feel they do in more earthbound games. As long as you don't fear those moments when they come, I think you'll find them fun and rewarding in their own way. And even though I go to great lengths to plan my sessions in ways to avoid getting stuck on continuances, I kind of feel like it's those moments that make storytelling for powerful PCs more fun than storytelling for more ordinary characters. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like what I'm doing and want to see more. The next video will either be an Exalted Lore video or a Blue Rose Deep Dive video depending on which one I finish first. If you want the manuscript for this video alongside with the previews for my game Machineborn, don't forget to visit my Patreon. And until next time, be good to each other and play some games.